and we are back here at one of my favorite spots that I shoot every year. This spot is really incredible because we have some really crazy mountain ranges here behind us. And then you guys can see these aspen trees right here create really interesting shadows and leading lines. There's even a river right here too that I often use as a leading line when I'm photographing this area. So just a perfect place to get different compositions. But today you guys can see still not a single cloud in the sky. It's just blue sky. So I'm trying to make the best of that that I can. Shooting a lot of intimates, a lot of abstracts looking more at the ground and in the shadows to try and get images, even though we don't have any clouds today. So same kind of situation with this spot. Last year, I got a really good shot of this location because we had really incredible cloudy weather. This year, it looks like it's not gonna happen. It's just gonna be sunny. So I'm trying to make the best of that, shoot different types of scenes. Uh, but this is kind of the composition that I like. You guys are seeing it right now. I like how these aspens create these nice shadows. I'll use those as leading lines. And there's also a river right here that I'll use sometimes as a leading line for different compositions of this shot. So after probably about an hour of trying to get some kind of composition here between the broad daylight with no cloud cover and the cows, I decided it was time to start making my way towards Telluride and then I would come back to this spot on a cloudy day. Along my route to Telluride, passing through the town of Ridgeway, Colorado, I decided to stop for sunset to shoot one of the best views of Mount Snuffles in all of Colorado from an area known as Dallas Divide. Now, sadly, we didn't get any clouds for sunset that night, but I still stayed and shot quite a few different frames into twilight and then ended up spending the night just there at the divide so that I could get up for sunrise and shoot the reflections on a beaver dam not too far from the place we shot sunset. All right, so we are at one of my favorite secret spots here to photograph leaves. So we're just on a dirt road, and I know people think I'm kind of nuts when they see me pulled over right here. And I've got my camera like four inches from the ground, and I'm just photographing mud basically. But this dirt road in particular, and a lot of these dirt roads, there's rivers nearby, and these little ruts from people's tires, you can see this little stream coming through, they tend to flood. And so when they flood, they get filled with just a shallow amount of water and then a bunch of the leaves from these aspen trees right here fall down and they land in these puddles. So I actually spend quite a bit of time when I come out here in the fall looking for these different mud puddles. And then what I'll do is I'll come up for sunrise. Because these mud puddles are so shallow, the water isn't very deep, they'll usually freeze. So I'll watch the temperature the night before and if it's dropping below freezing that night, then I know, okay, for sunrise, before the sun's come up, these mud puddles will likely have frozen. So I've come to this spot for the last five or six years, and I've always gotten something really interesting. If it freezes overnight, you get this nice ice, and then you get leaves on top of it. So I come here every year just to get that. Another really interesting thing that can happen, but it's very, very hard to find, is sometimes these leaves can be found in these little pools of oils that create really unique colors. But these pools of oil can only be seen from certain angles. So you guys can see right now, as I'm looking directly into the sun, you can see the reflection of the sun off of the water right here. But if I step to a different angle, now you just see right through the water down into the mud. So it's really important to find the right angle in order to be able to see these different oils and see the sunlight reflecting off of the surface of the water. So you guys can't see it from this angle, but here's the shot I've got set up right here. I've got my Nikon D850 set up. And the shot I have right now, because I'm facing the other way with the Nikon, I can actually see the sunlight reflecting off the oils in this pool. You guys can't tell, but there's a lot of iridescent oils in this little pool of water. And I tend to find them in pools of water that are still not moving and are very muddy. So if there's you know, a lot of mud or even um, cow manure actually tends to help kind of produce these oils. So if you see an area that kind of looks like this where it's kind of gross <laughs> and nasty and there's leaves in it and there's still water, this is actually the best place to find these oils. 
So let's come over here. It's kind of hard to get to without getting muddy. So we're going to jump to the other side of this little muddy bank. And let's show you the composition that I have right here. So now you guys might be able to start to see some of these oils very faintly on the surface of the water. So when you shoot them at the right angle, they can appear very blue and very colorful. So you can start to see that right now here with an Nikon D850, this composition that I have with just two leaves. So what I'm doing here is I always use a tripod for this because I have to use a high aperture and then I want to use a low ISO. Typically when you're doing this, you're doing it when there's not a lot of sunlight coming in. So that makes it kind of challenging. I'm not able to shoot these freehand, especially because I need to get the camera really, really close to these leaves. There's usually a very specific angle. I almost always have to shoot at a high aperture. So you guys can see right now I'm shooting at F16, two second exposures at my native base ISO, the lowest ISO I can go to. So here is what this pool looks like. And one of the things that you need to know is you can't use a polarizer. You have to take the polarizer off your camera. So right now the polarizer is mounted to this A7 IV. If I rotate it, you guys can see the difference that makes. The polarizer will cut the reflections out and remove the glare so you don't see those oils on the surface of the water. So if we get right up to this composition that I'm shooting, you guys will see as I rotate the polarizer, now you can see the oils, and now the oils are just completely transparent. So important to remove the polarizer before you start shooting. So what I do is I bring the tripod out and I get out a zoom lens, you know, 24 to 70 or 70 to 300 would be my recommendation. And then I try and find an interesting composition. So naturally these oils create really interesting textures. And usually what I'm trying to do is find an area where there's only a couple of leaves. It gets really noisy and messy and there's a lot happening here and it's just really crazy. So what I'm trying to do is isolate one, two, or maybe three leaves. You can see maybe there's a couple other spots over there I could shoot right over here where it's just more organized. So what I was able to find was this really interesting spot where there's one leaf that's basically still yellow and there's another one right next to it that's kind of dying and has been decaying for a while. And so I have this really interesting composition where I'm zoomed in at about 70 millimeter where you can just see those two leaves next to each other in those iridescent oils. So if I play the image back for you, this is the image that we're working with. So really interesting, all the different colors and textures that these oils create. Now, if I move the camera even slightly to the left or slightly to the right, the composition completely changes. And sometimes I even introduce shadows from the camera or even reflections and shadows from these trees. So I have to be really careful about what the composition is. And the angle is very important too. So you can see now without the polarizer in the way, you guys can see the reflection here on the water. But if I move this way, you'll start to see the reflection disappearing. Just because of the direction the sun's coming from, the way light bounces off the surface of water, you have to find a really interesting angle. It's very, very specific what angle you shoot this from. So once that exposure comes back, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the play button to preview the image. And I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in here to make sure I got everything nice and tack sharp, all the way from edge to edge. And if I didn't, I know I need to be a little bit lighter. Either I bumped it or vibration compensation might be turned on or I might need to turn up my aperture. But at F16, looks to me like everything is nice and tack sharp. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot a couple more frames of this exact same composition just for safety. I like to do this, especially with autofocus because of these small scenes, sometimes autofocus misses something or something else happens. So I like to have just backups in case one of them was slightly bumped or out of focus. Right, it is day four of our trip. So I ended up shooting sunset last night at Dallas Divide and then spending the night up there at a campsite and then shooting sunrise there. Now I've just made my way here into Telluride area and we're gonna go ahead and hop on the gondola right now to grab some breakfast burritos from one of my all time favorite places. This place is amazing. It's basically just like the subway of breakfast burritos. And every year I try and stop here at least once. If you are ever in Mountain Village or Telluride area, I'd highly recommend checking this place out. It's called The Pick 
and the breakfast burritos are some of the best I've ever had. Of all the unique mountain towns in Colorado, Telluride has always stood out to me, and one of the most memorable parts of Telluride is the free gondola that takes you from Telluride to the town of Mountain Village. The gondola itself is really fun to ride and has some of the most incredible views of Telluride itself as well as Mount Wilson. Also, huge bonus points to whoever designed the gondola and to the city of Telluride for not adding any unnecessary lights that create light pollution. Although the gondola runs at night, there are no lights the entire way and so you can actually see the Milky Way from the gondola itself on a moonless night. Over the years, I've made a point of trying to stop into as many different restaurants in the towns of Telluride and Mountain Village as I can, and I've definitely acquired some favorites. The first place I'd highly recommend in downtown Telluride is called Steamy's Burger Bar. Steamy's Burger Bar is open late and has a really wide range of different burger options, as well as a really crazy assortment of different sauces, including one called Blueberry Ketchup. When I made my first stop, I was very skeptical to try blueberry ketchup, but I was really pleasantly surprised. So if you're looking for something different, I would highly recommend checking this place out. Now, my next recommendation also in downtown Telluride would be Brown Dog Pizza, which is also open late. So if you're looking for a good pizza place, this is definitely the place to go. Now, moving on, if you're looking for something really fancy, there's All Reds, which is located at the top of the mountain on the gondola. This is definitely a pricier option and not something I'd recommend unless you're really looking to go somewhere very fancy, usually for an event. There's also Black Iron Grill, which is located in the town of Mountain Village. Both are really awesome options if you're willing to fork out some money for the food. Next, we have the place I mentioned earlier, which is The Pick. The Pick is only open really in the mornings until about 2 p.m., but they have some of the best breakfast burritos I've ever had, so if you're looking for a good place for breakfast, this is definitely the place to go. And that brings me to the final and definitely my favorite place to get food in all of Telluride, which is Poacher's Pub. You guys might think this is a little bit weird because this really is just what it looks like. It's a bar and pub located in the town of Mountain Village, but if you do happen to stop in there, definitely try the Gringo's Tacos. Might be the best tacos I've ever had. After four days of cloudless blue skies, we finally got our cloud cover. But in less than an hour, it went from partly cloudy to absolute downpour. Now normally I would say rainstorms are actually my favorite weather phenomenon to photograph in general. The only issue is that with fall color, the rain tends to tear the leaves from the trees. Now despite the onset of these really intense intermittent rainstorms, I still managed to get some pretty awesome drone footage.
overall, some of my favorite shots from the entire trip came from these first few clusters of storms, despite the fact that they did start to rip most of the fall color from the trees and all the areas surrounding Telluride. Thanks so much for stopping by for part two of this video. In part three, we encounter Snowfall, as well as Try and Cross Imaging Pass, which is a 4x4 trail that connects the town of Telluride to the town of Array and reaches a max altitude of 13,000 feet.